Hi scientists! Today we'll be talking about natural selection. Our big idea is that characteristics or traits that help a species survive stay in the population, which means that offspring will be continue to be born with these characteristics. We're going to start off today with a little bit of vocabulary. Our first word is adaptation which is a characteristic that increases an organism's ability to survive and reproduce in an environment. The in an environment piece is important because some characteristics might help survival in some environments, but not in others. Next, we have fitness, which is a measure of how well an organism can survive and reproduce in its environment. So if an organism is fit or has a high level of fitness, it's likely to survive and reproduce and if it has a low level of fitness, then it's unlikely to survive and reproduce, or less likely to survive and reproduce. And finally, we have natural selection, which is the process by which organisms with adaptations that are suited to their environments survive and produce offspring. And so we're going to look at this process in a bit more detail. And I like to break natural selection down into four steps. The first step is reproduction. So we start with a new generation of organisms being born in the particular environment that they're in. And then these organisms have different adaptations of their traits. So we, if we think about the trait as being height, right, some might be taller or shorter. Um, if we think about it in as um, how long their legs are, right, it could be longer legs, medium sized legs, shorter legs, or color. Um, could be lighter or medium or dark. And so all within the new generation of organisms, right, they're all slightly different. And so some of these organisms, because of the traits they have, are going to be better able to survive. Uh, so if you, if you have longer legs, perhaps you can run farther. If you have a certain coat color, perhaps you can camouflage better. Um, but if you are have traits that help you survive, you're more likely to reproduce. And if you have traits that don't help you survive, then you are less likely to reproduce. And that's what we see. So the organisms that survive, right, because they have these traits, then pass their adaptations on to their offspring. And then the cycle would begin again, and eventually we're narrowing down to traits that help the population survive or the organisms survive better and better and better. So let's look at a specific example. So we're going to do giraffes. This is a pretty simple example. We'll keep it easy. So we start with a new generation of giraffes, um, and some have longer necks, and some have shorter necks. And so the giraffes with the longer necks are better able to survive because they can get food easier, they can get more food, um, which means that they are healthier um, and has effects that extend beyond just eating food. And so these giraffes with the longer necks are going to be the ones that reproduce or who are more likely to reproduce and their offspring will get the long neck adaptation. And the giraffes with the shorter necks, right, perhaps they don't get enough food to survive and so they die before they reproduce. Or perhaps they, because they have less food, they are not as healthy, they might get sick, right, they might not be able to run as fast. Um, and again, they're less likely to reproduce, so the, the new, the next new generation of offspring will probably have more longer neck giraffes than shorter neck giraffes. Scientists also think about a few different types of natural selection, uh, or a few different patterns that we see in how traits are selected for by the environment. And so the first is directional selection. Um, and we look at these curves. You'll see that the dotted line is the initial population. Um, and they look kind of like a bell curve. And so the initial population in this case, well, for our example, we are going to think about brown deer. Um, and so our initial population, let's say, had some white deer, had some tan deer, had some brown deer. And the white deer were least likely to survive because they were least able to camouflage, right? So predators would have come and picked them out first, right? And then tan, right? Light tan, probably less likely, a little bit of darker tan, maybe. Um, and then brown deer, right? Most likely to survive. So we see that in the next generation, our um, bell curve has shifted 
right, or it's moved in a direction, I like to think about it, um, because the deer who were at this end of the curve had high, a higher level of fitness, and so they're better represented um, in the next generation, right, because those deer survived and reproduced, and their offspring have their traits. Um, and lots of the times we see that we see this pattern when there's limited resources. Um, so if organisms are fighting or competing for food. So directional selection, think that the curve moves in a direction, uh, either to the right or to the left. Our next type is stabilizing selection. So this is when individuals near the center of the curve have higher fitness than those at either end. So again, our dotted line is our starting point. Um, and our example for this, I'm gonna use birth weight in wild horses. So if, the, if a baby is born with a really, really low birth weight, it is unlikely to survive. And if a horse is born a baby horse is born with a really high birth weight, right? It might um, kill or hurt the mom. And so then we're, we see less likely to survive or that mom then, right, is unable to have more offspring. And so we want sort of a medium birth weight, not too big, not too small. Um, and so we see in our new generation that our offspring rate are more likely to have, right, that um, middle or medium birth weight. So stabilizing selection, we lose the traits that are sort of on either side, and we end up with more of the traits that are right in the middle. And then finally, we have disruptive selection, and this is when individuals on either side of the curve have better fitness than those in the middle. A good example of this is oysters. So light-colored oysters, right, tan or almost white oysters, can survive because they camouflage in the sand. And then dark-colored oysters, right, really dark brown or dark gray or black oysters, um, they survive because they can camouflage on the rocks. But medium-colored oysters really show up to on both the sand and on the rocks. Um, so they're more easily picked up by predators and don't survive. And so we see that in our next generation, we are more likely to have light colored oysters and dark colored oysters, oysters, um, but less likely to have medium colored oysters. So disruptive selection, selection, we're disrupting the curve. You can see that arc in the middle or that dip in the middle of the curve, um, right where we've disrupted um, the pattern of variation. Okay, so the most important thing to remember with natural selection is that the environment is what is causing the results. Um, so if you have, um, or an organism has adaptations that allow them to survive well in the environment, um, they are better able to survive. And if the environment changes, then the pattern of adaptations will also change um, because the environment is what is affecting species survival ultimately. Okay, we'll look at more examples in class, of course. So if you have questions, pop into office hours or leave them in the comments below.